All right, here we are, everyone. Wait, no, I gotta press go live. Huh? All right, everyone, here we are. Joe and Mike from uh, buildassetsonline.com. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, today, we're going <laughs> to be looking at uh, best dropshipping products uh, in, wa in water sports. So what do you guys think? Mike just got back from his trip. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. I'm taking it easy now. That's good. Um, you got a little. See, I'm a bit backlit. I look particularly tan, but I was gonna say it looks like you got a little suntan. I definitely got a little bit of a suntan, but not not as much as the camera showing. Hope they you... say the camera adds ten pounds. <laughs> I hope you were um, covering up your head. Yeah, that's definitely a priority now. <laughs> now that um, you know, I'm bald enough to start getting the scalp scalp burn and the scalp peeling but yeah it still happened a little bit yeah it's no good start it, it, you can start eventually like when you shower you can like scratch your head and it like kind of comes off but we're not gonna we're not gonna get into the details um yeah <laughs> but that's a that's a separate video 10 best um men's balding products <laughs> no i think there is no products it's the best things about being bald the only products you need are a buzzer I was I was watching the I was on the Peloton bike today and the, the the one of the instructors, you know, he's not bald, he has a nice full head of hair and um he basically shaved his head and he was saying like, "Oh, I'm never going back. Like it's so much cooler, you know? Like he doesn't have to worry about it." Cooler like airflow? Airflow, wow. yeah, yeah. He's more aerodynamic. Wow. He's just taking it easy now. <laughs> Speaking of take it easy, you're, you're wearing a nice hat, Joe. Oh, thanks. Build Assets Online. Go to buildassetsonline.com slash merch. Check out the hat. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. How are we looking at our people? Are we are we screwed? I don't know. It says we only got four viewers. Um, not great, but we got – it's, it's, like it's, it's ticking up. It's ticking up. I can't tell. I, yeah, I think it's – I can't really tell with YouTube. So let's just get right into the stream. Uh, we had a good intro, but now we're going to talk about the 10 best high-ticket dropshipping products for water sports. Now, before we get into the first slide, I want to talk about how whenever uh, we talk about high ticket drop shipping, um, people are always like, oh, uh, they look around and they say, what's expensive? Um, and they, they see their furniture around their house. They see their dining room table. They see like, I don't know, their kitchen chairs. They see their lights. And uh, they often overlook um, like all the things that are out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is going to be one of, of We see a lot of people do the home stuff. I mean, we've done it. We've done it all, but yeah, you, it, you can think outside of the, the, the realm of home. It's okay. There's plenty of, um, outside the box niches that aren't in your house that are great. And I think a lot, like a lot of these that we're going to talk about, um, are particularly dropship friendly because, you know, say something like uh, like a typical like vanity brand. They're doing, they're will be dropship friendly, but I kind of like these. And I will, you know, let's just go. We'll we'll get into it. We'll get into let's it. Let's get into it. So first one, first product we got a kayak. Uh, yeah. Very basic, but so many so many different kayaks. You know, I think they got ones where you could pedal uh, with your feet. I don't know if it's called something different. Uh, ones where you can paddle with a a rower or whatever um you know different applications you know uh what's it called people like just for maybe racing fishing different different whatever people do in the mm -hmm. in the water you could do it in a kayak yeah and i'm, I'm going to share a secret so what i was going to say earlier basically brands like these think about this brand ocean kayak right here how many products do you think they have in their entire catalog Probably quite a few. You think? Uh, I would think. I don't know. Do you want to? I would say a brand like brands like these probably have less than a hundred products. I, I think I'm actually pushing it. All right. Well, that's. I mean, I was kind of saying that as quite a few. Like I wasn't. Um... Well, okay. But but think about it compared to say like a furniture, a home furniture brand. Okay. They have like thousands and thousands of SKUs. And sometimes that it can actually be a bit overwhelming for a new person 
because they don't know what they should list, you know, what's popular, what what they have. You know, it, it's a bit to work through, and it can kind of lead to some analysis paralysis. I think it's more common for brands like these to have, say, like 10 products, less than 20. And um, what I really like about that is it's really easy to do text ads for these brands because if someone is searching uh, – what, what, what are these brand names here? Perception. So I'm assuming Perception is a brand name, or Perception Pescador. So – or I want to find a better example. Uh, Old Town Topwater. We'll go with that one. You know, if Old Town Topwater, that brand, if they only have 20 products, you know that if someone is searching the brand name, there's only one of 20 options they can be looking for. And so it's actually really easy just to send everyone searching the brand name to like a basic collection page that has all of the products. And it's actually uh, a good user experience because you know what they're looking for. You can condense it into a pretty small space. And so that type of thing works out really well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, no, you make a great point, actually. Because uh, yeah, you're right. Some of the furniture catalogs are are absolutely massive. Um, but just to contrast that a little bit, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I, I, I totally get your point about the catalog being less intimidating. But I do want to touch on something that we've done uh, with, with furniture brands in the past, which I thought is interesting food for thought. When we, when we got that super, super competitive furniture supplier back in the day, and um, everything was like 50 plus, like every everything they had on Google Shopping, like without a doubt, was 50 plus products, 100 plus products, or sorry, 100 plus sellers, 50 plus sellers. Like, yeah, I just, it was so funny. Like I, that was when my friends from England were visiting, it was like right after my wedding. And um, I was kind of clueless. Like I didn't even really know how to use Excel well at the time. And uh, since my friend was over, I knew he was good at Excel. He showed me all these Excel tricks that so we were easily able to take their catalog and condense it into a CSV and then upload it with the pictures mm -hmm. and everything. So we uploaded like thousands of products um, mm -hmm. in like two seconds and we got a bunch of sales. Uh, like that, but we were a bit more experienced at the time. So, you know, you had a very specific ad strategy um, that, yeah, is probably a little bit more advanced than what you just mentioned. Yeah, I think doing what you just said is for someone who's new to execute all those things well um, isn't that easy because even if you're able to do the CSV stuff and you could upload it well, um, the descriptions may not be good. You may not have everything else to kind of cover your bases. And then when it comes to doing ads, if you don't segment things properly, if you're not very careful about how you manage 10,000 SKUs, then it's going to it's gonna produce mediocre results. Yeah. So again, a brand like this, um, you know, the, the first store we ever made, Joe, it wasn't in this niche or anything, but it was like the first couple suppliers that we got, we were actually very lucky that – they were in a similar position. They only had like five products or less than 10. The first two suppliers we got. Yeah. 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 And yeah. No, so, that's good. Well, yeah. So when we were running ads, we were actually only running ads for like 30 products. Yeah. And you, so that way you get a good spread of click distribution among the brands, among the individual products. And it's just a lot easier to manage. And then ironically, one of those brands got sold into what you were talking about that 10,000 SKU um, big company. And every, the actual brand actually went downhill from there. So a lot of smaller brands like these that you see in water sports actually have uh, a lot more brand integrity and there's a lot of good things about them. But let's move on yeah. in the deck. Yeah. All right. Slide number three. Um, all right. This was, a, this was an interesting one, a floating fitness mat. And there's a bunch of, a bunch of different types of these that I found. But you can see here this first product, oh. Swimline uh, Soul Fit Yoga Board. So... I guess, you know, you want to do some, some sun salutations out on the water. You get one of these, <laughs> you get one of these. Well, actually, <laughs> um, me and my girlfriend were her paddle boarding. Um, we, we paddle boarded twice on our vacation and there is like paddle board yoga. It's a big thing. Actually, I looked it up. They have it, um, by the shore where we live actually. So that, uh, that little impression you did is definitely happening. My wife, I don't know. She goes in, uh, she goes on the paddleboard and stretches. Yeah, no. See, listen. I mean, 
get Swim Line is a, a decent sized company as well. You get sick of being in the house on the mat. The yoga mat gets a little dusty. Uh, it's not? good. It, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of core going on when you gotta you know you're not just balancing on the on the floor. You gotta yeah yeah yeah. You engage the good old uh, muscles. Engage, yeah the good yeah. old stabilizers. Um. So yeah, I think this is definitely definitely an interesting one. Um, definitely, I think products like this, and I'm just kind of going off of a whim here. Uh, great category, great candidate for like blog articles, because uh, I would highly yeah. doubt that there's much competition with the generic keyword version of this, like floating yoga board or whatever. There's probably so many different ways that people phrase this that um, ranking in Google would not be too difficult um, brand you know brand aside yeah and we often talk about how sometimes when you acquire a brand you'll find out about products you do not even know about it's certainly possible that this would happen you may never like this brand actually sells a lot more generic stuff but you can acquire them and then all of a sudden you say okay they have these soul fit yoga boards for the water and now you've kind of stumbled onto a, a totally different product type. And uh, yeah, I'm on this brand's website right now. They have a lot of a lot of weird stuff and uh, a lot of regular stuff. So this brand is, is a bit bigger, but yeah, interesting product types um, could lead you down a bunch of avenues. Yeah. So how'd you even find this? I don't know. I was I was doing niche research for the for the call today for the show that's how i found it i don't know i was just uh you know going down going down the rabbit hole looking at different stuff oh where'd you learn that i learned it in the uh the build assets online instant e-commerce asset course where else i uh, just wanted you to plug it all right next. <laughs> um all right so next slide we have a so this is actually outside of the water, not in the water, but has to do with the water. A kayak carrier, so this is for carrying your kayak uh, on your car. And um, yeah. this is this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's when you find something, it's very easy to say like, oh, just find the kayak and then stop. But I think it's important to think about all the little details that get the kayak to where it needs to be like mm -hmm. and this this is a good example of that yeah even this um malone eco light trailer so this is why we actually we hate nicheless because it gives you the wrong idea of what you need to do um because if you just if you just have kayak on a niche list so it's oh i'm gonna start up a kayak store and then they just go after kayak brands all, all the regular stuff totally neglecting the fact that if they just do like a water sports store, they can have the kayaks. They can go after these ramps the or trailers, whatever they are. And you can branch out in a bunch of different directions. And it's much more likely one of them is going to be low competition or it's just going to be a situation where it's going to work out really well for you. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, Mike, we are going to be putting together a niche list soon because I really... You know, here's here's the thing that's stupid about the internet. I don't want to get off into a little. I don't want to get off into too much of a tangent here, um, for all the listeners. Here's the thing that's stupid about the internet. Mike and I, like we've said it multiple times, we hate niche lists. We hate these top ten product roundup videos. We try and we 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 have kind of figured out a way to position them to actually bring you guys some value. Um, I guess we couldn't really think of a good way before, but it's something that, you know, the users of the internet. You guys search this stuff, and so this, is what, <laughs> this is what we have to create. And, you know, sometimes it's interesting. Like, you have to create a piece of content around a keyword and kind of angle it a little bit differently than everyone else. And that's, yeah. something, um, that's something that I'm learning. Yeah, it is what it is. The people are asking for it, so we, we must deliver. Yeah, despite anyway. Despite our opinions. Moving on. Kayak carriers, boat speakers. This was very interesting because, you know, there's so many different kinds of boat speakers and um, I think they have to be, you know, it, it's not just like a sound system for your house. You know, there's definitely certain specs, certain requirements that are going to make it a lot less competitive than 
like a home stereo system or just like a generic electronic product that we would recommend against? Well, I would say that this may, this may be a hard one to get into because you have, um, just looking from this list, I don't know how deep it goes, but like JBL, that's a huge brand. JL Audio, I'm not too sure what they do, but I think, yeah, if you can get in with a brand like this, and oftentimes, like, this is what it takes. You have to kind of find a really niche product. If So we're talking the audio industry, the, yeah, audio industry right now. If you can get in with, like, a niche brand in the audio industry, you can actually use that as leverage, not just for uh, the water sports store, but to have a whole audio store. Um, and... While that may be harder to break into normally, it kind of starts with finding these niche products and you can go to another audio person and be like, hey, we already have JL Audio and build it up from there. And that's another uh, important way to, to create a store. No doubt, no doubt. Um, all right, so I guess we'll just move right on to the next one. Uh, it's kind of similar to the yoga stuff, but inflatable water trampoline. This looks, uh, this looks like fun. I like this one. Because, you know, I remember we had a trampoline back in the day. Uh, funny story, actually. Yeah. So we had a trampoline and um, Hurricane Sandy. I don't know if you guys remember that. It, kind of, it was like many years ago, I think in 2015, 2016, maybe a little. No, it was early. It was earlier than that because I was still in college. I was uh, probably 2013. Okay. 2014. Well, anyway, we had a regular trampoline. Um well, it was at our parents' house. Like, we had it, like, for many years. And actually, during Hurricane Sandy, uh, the wind actually blew it up over our over the fence in their backyard and right through our neighbor's car. Yeah, went over our fence into our neighbor's driveway and just went through his uh, front windshield. That was fun. Yeah. But the, the, <laughs> the anyway, about that trampoline is it was always, like, we had a net and everything, but people, like – Trampolines are a little bit dangerous because a lot of times kids like flip off the trampoline um, and you can get hurt, obviously. But this, you fall right into the water. Yeah, it's safe. It's uh, it's fun for the whole family. I kind of want one of these. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's actually a, quite a, a good price point. Yeah, this is like the perfect price point. So for the listeners, yeah. um, these are ranging from like 1500 to 3000 and you know there's i'm seeing two brand like two brands i've never heard of so it's not like you know we're looking at gbl or whatever we're looking at aqua glide rave bongo um yeah so definitely lots of interesting things to explore in this niche it's weird that rave bongo doesn't show up as with search volume here but rave sports bongo let's see if that does it does it auto complete in Google? It, it actually auto completes to Rave Sports Bongo. Okay. Um, yeah, they got a lot of stuff. Yeah. I didn't realize how deep this uh, industry goes, but yeah. What what, what kind of other you stuff know, are you seeing? Doing YouTube reviews of these. What's up? What kind of other stuff are you seeing? Um. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost it. Let me go back to the auto complete. Some Aqua Launch, Saturn Rocker. Let me see what these things are. Uh, yeah, like they have like a floating rocker. I don't. Even, I'm trying to describe it. It's almost like a, um. It looks like a big cowboy hat, and then I guess people are just on either side. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you could search it, it'll make a, a lot more sense. Okay. I mean, I kind of get the idea. I'll I'll um I'll see if I can search it for the uh for the viewers here. Because it's like everyone is is on it and you kind of you're standing up, you're trying to bounce on it and knock people off. Oh, it's like a seesaw kind of. But it's like a yeah, but it's 360 degrees. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I see one here. I'm going to take a, a little see if I can um have a pontoon slide. This is crazy. These things are expensive, man. What kind of price points are you seeing? They have this um, 
It's the Rave Iceberg 7 foot is $3400. Wow. I'm going to here I'm pulling up a picture um from from just that Google. Is this is a floating rocker, something mm-hmm. I found. So for the, for the uh for the for the viewers on YouTube, you could take a look. For the listeners, yeah, it almost does look like a cowboy hat, but I feel like it almost kind of looks like a like a planet and it's got like the ring around it and everyone's yeah. on the ring and trying to I guess that's why they call it the Saturn Rocker. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. I'm seeing. I'm seeing even. This is. This is definitely. Um, this brand is definitely drop shipping. Because I'm seeing some stores that are uh, have all the telltale signs. So are we getting off this call and, secu- and securing this supplier or what? Every every time we do this, it winds up like that, but. You know, this may be the episode that we cut it off. <laughs> but uh, in any event, all right, let's move, let's move on. All right, so now this one is kind of cliche. You see these on every niche list on the planet, but I figured, hey, let's include it since you said you did it on your trip. Uh, stand up paddleboard. Yeah. Hooray! And these things—they're not—they're not cheap. I mean, and if you look here. Um, just from the screenshot you're looking at, and if you're just listening, um, you know, you have a brand like Body Glove, you have a brand Boat, B-O-T-E, a brand that's Cruiser Sup, but these all have between one and four competitive stores. So even though this niche is pretty blown up, like people talk about it all the time, it's not like all these brands are completely compromised and you have 25 drop shippers on them and stuff like that. There's definitely, um, I mean, I, I think there's room basically in every brand, every product, every niche, because there's so many brands out there most of the time. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't even look that, uh, that crowded. Yeah. People don't realize that. Uh, well, I think so. A lot of people, when they start communicating with us, like as our students, they always get hung up on the competition. And the competition mm. is important to talk about, but I, I always, I never think it's like the end all be all of, of anything, especially with this kind of stuff, especially when, so competition can be kind of a, an impenetrable barrier if it's a situation where you have like 50 big box retailers and they're all coming after, you know, they're all competing on like, like a widget or something. But with this kind of dropshipping, when you have other stores that you're competing with, like other smaller brands, like there's no reason why you can't come in and eventually win the whole thing. I mean, mm-hmm. there's been situations where we've had people try to come in after the stuff we sell, and uh, I believe you said you gobbled them up with the. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you if you come across a brand that is really good. I mean, they, they're making you a lot of money. Um, you can do a lot, especially with what we teach in our course, as far as like just taking up all the real estate in the search engine and, uh, making it hard for people to compete. But the majority of people don't do that. Um, yeah, the competition is not as fierce as it may seem, even if there is a bunch of dropshippers on it, the worst that happens is that things kind of come down to price and, um, you know, there's ways around that, especially if you're doing customer service good or uh, there's, there's other ways to kind of to deal with that. But yeah, we have never really found too much issue with competition. Like, oh, there's this one drop shipper that's just destroying us. Um, or at least we didn't know about it because we never, you know. And we've also had I- situations where with our first store, you know, we didn't really care about it too much. Where And then there was at least one there's other. One other. What's yeah. that? Yeah, there was people definitely outworking us by a lot, you know, and but we were still able to make money, be profitable, and sell the store. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring it up again. That that sink guy, <laughs> that sink guy from the other episode. Um, I'm sure he's not the first person to sell sinks. Yeah, but he's dominating. So, and his website is probably only a couple years old. Yeah, that's from last week's episode, guys. Uh, if you just want to type in the YouTube, build assets online, high-ticket dropshipping products, we, yeah. we talk about that in the last episode. 
Yeah. So Mike was, uh, Mike's tongue was out. He was panting over this, over this <laughs> sink site. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. So this, I hope this one doesn't seem like a cop out, but so I had to mention that the paddles for like any sort of water thing, a boat, uh, a paddle board, these things aren't cheap either. And I think there could be definitely some money to be made just mm-hmm. on the paddles. So for the the listeners, the price range is probably between 250 and 500. Uh, we actually usually like to sell things a little bit higher, but um, you know, on our stores, we actually regularly sell stuff that's in this range. And it's like, it's a little, it's like a cherry on top. Yeah. You know, if it's easy, if you have your infrastructure good, then it's not any skin off your back to make $50, whatever. As long as you're not, you know, blowing, blowing the bank on, uh, on ads. And so that's why it's important to, you know, just have your numbers worked out, have your margins worked out. And, uh, it's, it's fine to make sales of this stuff and people may even buy multiple. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, uh, be sure to leave your questions uh, in the chat. We'll get to those uh, after, after we get through the, the whole deck. All right. So we got the paddles. The last... yeah, it feels like we're, we're, we're doing like a corporate meeting to our uh, employees right now. That's what this has become, Mike. It's just the whole world has turned <laughs> corporate. I hope you guys have your Build Assets Online hats. <laughs> You're ready for the team building event next week. <laughs> oh, man. At my job, um, I don't want to like – I guess I don't want to say like the exact thing. But um, so part of like the company's mission was like candor. Not mission, but like part of the culture they were trying to push was candor. And so people would say like in the meetings, like if they were trying to say something like kind of bluntly – they would say, oh, in the spirit of candor, I don't think this is good. That's literally a Silicon Valley skit. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, But it actually happened before the show. <laughs> before the show what is the... Oh, what, is, what is that? What is the skit? The scrum? From uh, Silicon Valley? With the scrum? Jared? He's doing the no, scrum. No, no. Oh, oh, no, okay, okay. So it's like they hired... They hired they were doing like inter- CEO interviews for the company. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. And yeah. they're at this party or something, and they have like one of the potential CEOs there. And he's like, I got to be honest, I've been reading this book called uh, Radical Candor. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> that show was great. I, I That was one of my favorite shows. I wish it wasn't over. Yeah, it plays, it plays on that, that culture very well. Yeah. Did Mike Judd? It was by Mike Judd, right? Yeah. yeah did, a, a, yes. Did he also make Office Space, or no? I don't know. I just know him from Beavis and Butthead and uh, King of the Hill. Yeah. All right. So, the next thing we have the life. Oh, the life jackets. We skipped this one. So, uh, these can actually be more expensive than I thought. If you want a premium quality life jacket, and um, yeah. You know, we're seeing things from 300 to almost $600 here for the listeners. And, you know, everyone always asks the question, and it's, believe me, it's not hard to deal with, but people always ask, oh, what about shipping? What about shipping? How do I deal with shipping? <laughs> My suppliers, some of them shipping. But this, stuff like this, um, shipping is most likely not going to be any sort of extra thing with something of this size. Probably like mm-hmm. quick FedEx or UPS. I gotta be honest, Joe. I prefer the bigger items. Me too. Me too. I think people really neglect them for some reason because there's people who like don't even know about high ticket drop shipping and they're just trying to do their own thing. And I feel like it's actually like a roadblock for a lot of these people. They're like, "Oh, this is too big. How is this gonna ship? All that." When it's of the same level of ease most of the time as uh, shipping something like this. I agree with you, but uh, still trying to spice it up for the uh, yeah. for the viewers. Out I there. think I think life jackets like this is probably less common. They're probably usually a cheaper price point, and um, like I don't think you're gonna make sales if, if so. If you have uh, this brand like Spinlock here, you're probably not gonna make sales for the term life jacket because of just how much of a premium uh, product it is. Agreed. 
So these are these are just things to consider. This does have a decent amount of search volume though. Spinlock deck vest has a uh, people are even. Oh wait, no, never mind. I thought people were like bundling them into packs of four and selling them that way. Uh, but well, you know, I would assume people do buy the. That's the other thing. People probably do buy these in bulk because if you get a boat, you don't typically just buy one life jacket. You like probably buy as many people as your boat can fit. There's probably actually laws about that or something. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know. I wouldn't sneeze at it, Mike. It's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, see, even this is on the um, American Sailing Association website. They're talking about these. So, what are they? It's always good to be in with those things that are like compliant with particular uh, industry, you know, uh, associations and stuff. Because it's definitely a thing that comes up. Um, even in one of our stores, Joe, we rank pretty well for like. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a, that nature. Some yeah. sort of certification. Um, with the yeah. thing and it was funny yeah i was gonna i was gonna say you're never gonna convert off the keyboard life jacket for stuff like this but if there are some sort of boat boat like certifications i don't know i'm just making up an acronym like bpsa life jacket certification like it's got certain things you can definitely convert off a term like that and that stuff in in google is very easy to rank for organically as a matter of fact mike i don't know if you remember this but that page you're talking about on our stores, we ranked for that just by making a collection. Yeah, no content, nothing. Yeah, no backlinks, no nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, um, and it's, it's something people ask about frequently. But yeah, no, the the certification is literally the ASA. It's the American Sailing Association. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure people are searching for American Selling Association certified blank. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We're dropping bombs. Uh, yeah. It's underappreciated it's, by the number of viewers. Today's a slow day. I don't know. What, it, all we have here is Nathan. Yeah. He's just cheering us on. <laughs> is it like, uh, is the moon in like a weird position today or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's not even out yet. I know, but what is that called? It's like the lunar, like, I don't know. You know this stuff better than I do when the the, the moon is a certain way and people are behaving differently. Yeah, like like Mer Mercury. Uh, yeah, retrograde. I don't know if anything's retrograding right now. All right, well, there's got to be an underlying reason why people aren't coming. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's the YouTube algorithm. Well. The party continues. What's the next The next one? <laughs> the next one we got is uh, Anchors. And another one, yes, not not so expensive. Um, mm -hmm. But still, you know, interesting. I, I think I, I put it on the list because no one really thinks about Anchors in that way. Like, people always think about the most obvious things. And to me, Anchors, it's one of those things. It's literally, it's literally under the boat. So you don't even <laughs> see it most of the time. A hidden niche, Joe. <laughs> uh, do you remember? I'm surprised there's not more expensive anchors, though. There might be. I, I was kind of just sorting by 200 and above, so there might be more expensive ones. Yeah, there's. I mean, if yeah, there's probably if you can get in with one of these brands, they're not just selling one weight of anchor. They probably have a whole collection of boat parts and that can branch off into again a million other things so yeah even if someone is a 300 dollars anchor it's all right for a sale a 500 hundred dollar anchor but no i'm seeing um there's another one up here 33 pounds stainless steel fixed shank something something two thousand dollars mantis anchor 105 pound galvanized steel anchor Thirteen hundred dollars. So there's some ex expensive anchors. Um, I think this is a question of whether you can get in with these or not. But yeah, it could be. Um, this is something you can can convert for generically, right? If someone's searching a hundred and five pound anchor, that's a pretty good keyword to show up for if you have exactly that because you're really solving all the specs you need. 
unless there's something more to anchors that I don't understand, but it's just a piece of metal. You need a certain weight based on your boat. So you're not going to care if it's a pink anchor, if it's a blue anchor, all these things, you're kind of, you, you get, you get what I'm saying, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. You know, the weight, again, the weight meets the criteria. So if someone's looking for that, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. It seems to me like the weight is the main criteria and the material. So, but the weight would be the, would be the main deciding factor in what you're doing. There you go. All right. So moving on to the last one, I don't even remember what this is. Oh, uh, kite boarding, kite surfing, kite boarding, uh, packages. Cause you need the kite, you need the board, maybe a couple other things. So seems like a good niche. Uh, again, I think it's right in that perfect price range. I'm seeing stuff for around one to $2,000. I'm sure you can go up to 3000. So, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, this looks fun. Again, this is going to be one of those brands or one of those situations where these people don't have a lot of products, most likely. They focus on kiteboarding or they focus on, you know, these particular water sports. And um, one thing I do want to touch upon is that it looks like a couple of these product listing ads are selling packages. Yeah. And so we were alluding to earlier about you know, what do I do if there's a bunch of people competing on my products and stuff like that? Um, doing something like these packages is a great way to separate yourself from the competition because all of a sudden you're offering something unique. It's not everyone just selling the Ozone Sub-Zero V1 Kite for 15, 60, whatever. Someone's doing a 5% discount. Someone's doing a 6% discount. It gets insane. If you're offering, if you're able to kind of consolidate a bunch of things into one package, um, it may be a little bit harder to show up for like exact exact searches, but you can essentially have your own standalone product listing ad. Uh, you can separate yourself from the market. A lot of good things that can be done with packages. Agreed, agreed. Um, so that that's it for the list. There's the top 10 water sports products to uh, explore in 2020. Um, so, I mean, we'll end it early, Mike. If, uh, if you guys got no questions, we'll end it early. I don't, uh, we, we got it. We got our monetization. We don't need, we don't need this anymore. Yeah. We don't, we don't need so to we rack need up the watch time anymore. Yeah. So, uh, that's it. Build assets online.com slash playbook. Grab our free whoa. course today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. All right. What's up? Well, Nathan said some things. Oh, right. Yeah. No, I'm, we're going to get to the chat. I'm just, this is the last slide. Okay. Yeah, billassetsonline.com slash playbook will uh, be a nice little uh, free course for you. Introduction to how we look at things in not just the dropping drop shipping sphere, but you know, the whole online business, creating an online portfolio type deal. Yeah, and we're not going to go into too much detail now, but word on the street has it. There's going to be there's going to be some consolidation of the the courses that we sell. Let's not get into it yet, Joe. We won't get into it. I'm just saying word on the street. It's an expression. I know. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So um I appreciate the candor though. Oh yes, of course. Of course. Uh all right, so Nathan. He says, I'm not bald, but I'm super glad because I have wicked bad psoriasis on my scalp. Hmm. Um what do you have to say about psoriasis, Joe? Uh, not much, because I don't have it. I have uh, I have two patches of eczema on my knee that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I can't get rid of it. Every time Is I that not psoriasis? No, it's not psoriasis. The, okay. the dermatologist said it's harmless. Yeah, so it's like, it's like your little pet. Yeah, I like scratching but it. I, I, I feel like... Nathan, if you shaved your head, you would have um, the psoriasis may go away. But I mean, what do I know? Why don't you Google best uh, psoriasis shampoo 2020 and then go with the first thing you, you see. You come up that? What's that? We have a psoriasis blog. <laughs> no, I'm being sarcastic because that's obviously the best the best product that you're gonna find. Oh. <laughs> All right. 
uh, Nathan said, I love the brotherly dynamic you guys have. You're not timid to challenge each other more than you would with a non-related co-host. Yeah. I think we would challenge a non-related co-host. Yeah, I, I guess if I couldn't challenge them, they wouldn't be a co-host. Yeah. But... And uh, Nathan also says, apparently the water carpets that float are all the rage right now. That's why it's in the niche list for 2020. It's, that's why it's a hot product, Nathan. Yeah, there are some cheap ones too. Like, I, I know what he's talking about. It's almost like um, a floaty, but it's just a rug. Mm. I don't even know how they work, but. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Mangabiera said, keep it up, guys. Love the content. We, we love you, Gabriel. <laughs> Very good name. I think it's Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> Gabrielle would be like the, like the female. Gabrielle's a girl name. Yeah, but I think judging by his photo, he's, uh, I think he's got like a shaved head. I don't know. We're not gonna identify him as as anything. I don't, okay. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that responsibility. Yeah, we we identify niches. That's it. <laughs> uh, Dion said, "I'm here for you guys." Thank you, Dion. Ethan said, "Drop the store." Oh, um, maybe maybe one day in the future, maybe we'll make like a public, not a public store, but one that people inside the membership can uh, can see almost like a case study. Well, that's def. I mean, I, that's definitely on my radar is doing doing something for the membership. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that for a while, or maybe at least turning one of our stores that we don't really care about into that. We could do that. I don't know what stores we have that we don't care about, though. But the one that doesn't really make sales right now. <laughs> oh, okay. That that's different. That's yeah. a different story. We'll talk about. We that have later. given that store to some people just to model after. Okay. Um. What's next? Dion. Okay, Dion said, "You guys really break it down in a different way. Other people have you fighting over the same winning products." Yeah. You know, you can't win forever, Dion. You can't even in something like boxing. You know, you're only you're only the champ for one or two fights, and then you're then you're not the champ. So, it's the same thing with these AliExpress products, these niche list products. Everyone tries to do them, and the majority of people fail. Not necessarily because of others, because we've definitely done some super generic stuff and had it work out, but. People fail because they're, they're they don't have like the right skills. You know they're they're going about it the wrong way. They are looking. There's one. Give me the product. Give me the product. Give me the product. But everything else that they do during the execution of that is lacking. And so, yeah, that's that's just how it goes, man. Yeah. So uh, Nathan or Ethan asks. What do you got? Hold on, Mike. I gotta go get the door real quick. Uh, you could just take the rest of these questions. I'll be right back in one minute. All right. All right. Cool. Right back. Um. So Ethan says, "What do you get in the elite fleet?" So right now the elite fleet is you essentially get a private coaching channel with Joe and I. So whatever you're doing, uh, whether it's drop shipping, whether it's Kindle, whether it's blogging, whatever. Um, you know, we've done all that. So you get a private channel with us. We can walk you through what we think you should do, how to implement stuff. You really get to tap into our frame of mind, our strategies, all that. Um, and it's tailored to your exact situation. So that's why we do it. And then you also have the community as well to kind of connect with other people that are doing what you're doing and just have more of, uh, other people to kind of grow with. And Gabriel says, what about chargebacks with high ticket items? Is it higher than low ticket? Um, not necessarily. And there's a few reasons for this. So if you're doing something like low ticket, a lot of the time with AliExpress and different brands, you know, it's going to be a lower quality product. Uh, the shipping is going to take a long time. And so those two reasons can be a huge source of chargebacks. If someone never gets their product, boom, chargeback. 
if someone's product is defective, boom, defective chargeback. Uh, with high ticket, a lot of the companies that you're working with, a lot of the suppliers have more incentive to actually perform and deliver. So, because they have a you know they have a U.S. brand, they have a, a name that they're trying to uphold, and so they will provide a better quality product, and they will deliver it on time. And it's really just your job as the uh, as the store to not screw anything up along the way. And so chargebacks are really rare uh, in the case of high ticket if you're doing things correctly. Uh, so Jay Reed said, let's talk B2B drop shipping next. It's a good idea. That was definitely on the radar um, for the one of the next ones. It's a good idea. Uh, Dion said, would you consider all these products seasonal? Yes probably uh but to be honest we sell some similar things and i'd have to check on the sales history of them because i mean there's some places in the, in the country where it is warm throughout the year so um even with things like say boating right people that are people that have boats are usually using them for you know they can they can need something for their boat at any time so when we talk about seasonality yeah people maybe buying like those uh crazy water trampolines more in the summer for sure but as we've discussed in other videos there's ways to kind of pad it out with other less seasonal items so yeah i mean it it, it some of these things are definitely seasonal to a degree yep uh, and then ethan wants to know how many people are in the elite fleet um and i would say Oh, I, uh, I just looked at the active members. It's uh, like 79. Yeah, so hopefully that's enough for Ethan. <laughs> so I guess uh, that is it for this one. Yeah, appreciate it, everyone. Um, we're not going to give too many links today, but just go to buildassetsonline.com slash playbook. Grab the free course. You know what to do. Absolutely. Is that it? That's all I got. That's it? All right. Take it easy. We need like an 